Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing good and I welcome you all to another video for Math Kangaroo preparation. And today we are going to complete 2024 Math Kangaroo paper for grades three and four as this is part two of our five markers, right? So if you haven't watched our first part, so you can go to our channel and you can watch it. I know the exam is near, so this can be a good uh, revision for you. Right. So let's get started with our today's video and do let me know how your preparation is going on and if you are all set for Math Kangaroo exam. OK, so let's get started with our very first question. So the question is, there are exactly two frogs in each row and each column. You can see this is a row. So there are two frogs. In this row as well, there are two frogs. And in this one as well, there are two frogs. Now, if we look down, basically in a column, okay, there are two frogs, there are two frogs, and then there are two frogs again. Correct. The frogs decides that two of them will jump to a neighboring empty cell at the same time. Neighboring cell have a side in common. So basically, if we are talking about this frog, this frog can jump over here and over here. The neighboring cell, which is having the side common. Afterwards, there will still be exactly two frogs in each row and in each column. So how many ways can the frog do this? Okay, so if we see, this frog can come down or can go over here. Right. Same way, this frog can come over here. This one can come over here and over here. Right. And this can come over here and this one can come over here. Right. And this one can also go one step up to the neighboring cells. So I just showed you how the neighboring cells looks like. Let's see how we can do this question. I just want to give you one example of doing this. For example, this is the picture. You can see the very first one. Correct. Let me quickly remove this. One second. Okay. This looks more good. I did not want to show you the another part. Okay. So if you will see over here, this is the main picture. Okay. This is the main picture which they have provided in the cushion. So what I'm going to do is let me move one of the frogs. Okay. How am I going to move one of the frogs? Here. So basically, which frog I have moved? This one to this place, to the neighboring cell. But the problem is, this column is having three frogs now. Right? So which one should we move so that this column should have two of them? And then all the other columns also should have two of the frogs. So what should we do? Correct. The middle frog we can move over here. Now you can see in this column, in this column, as well as in this column, we are having two, two frogs, right? And if you will see the rows as well, in each of the rows, there are two, two frogs. This can be our one way. What we did? We moved this frog over here and this one over here. Correct? So this is our one way. Using this only, what else we can do? Let's see. So again, I'm giving you the same picture, the main picture, which is there in the uh, cushion. Correct. Now, this time, what I am doing is I'm moving this frog down. OK, this one down. But now the bottom row is having three frogs. So what should we do? What should we do? Yes, we can move this one over. Here, correct. So that each of the rows and columns are having two, two frogs. You can see this now. Each row is having two frogs. Each column is having two frogs. Correct. So this can be our second way. Wherein we are moving the frog down and one frog up. Okay. We got two different ways. Now using these two ways only, let's find out our other ways as well. Again, this is our main picture from the question. What else can we do? We moved this frog over here, right? In the first scenario. What if we move it down? 
So the frog is here instead of this part. Right? Now what will you do? Yes, we can move this one up. This can be our third way. Correct? So, so far we got our three ways. Now, after this, can we do... If I am shifting, let's say this one over here. So, we are having frog this way. Right? So, what can we do now? Now, this column is having three frogs. So, we can only move the top frog one step. Right? Now, each row and each column will have two, two frogs. And from here, we can see there are four different ways of moving the frogs. There is no other way. You can try it, but it will land to the same conclusion. Okay? So, we got our correct answer. That is option D. Pretty simple question. We just need to visualize because uh, it will be a written paper, right? You will have your pencil with you. So, you can do a little bit of rough work, but try to make and do the minimal work, okay? So, that it is not uh, making you confused with your scribbles and your drawings, okay? So, moving on to our another question, question 22. It says the figure below shows a honeycomb with nine cells. You can see there are in total nine cells. There is honey in some cells. The number in each cell shows how many neighboring cells contains honey. Okay. Neighboring cells have a side in common. So these two will be neighboring cells because they are having a common side. Correct. Whenever there is a common side, that means they are neighboring cells. So, how many cells contains honey? That is what we need to find out. Let's start with number 2, the starting point. Okay. Let's assume this cell is having honey. So, I will be making a tick to the cells which are having honey. Okay. Now, this 2 indicates that 2 of its neighboring cells will have honey. Right. And we can see over here, it is attached with 1 and 2. 2 of the neighboring cells. Correct. That means number 3. And number 4. Right? Now, if we are saying that this number 4 is having honey, that means 4 of its neighboring cells. 1, 2, 3 and 4. These 4 will also have honey. That means this, this 3 is already having honey and 2 is already having honey as per our assumption. Okay? Moving on. Let's assume this 3 is also having honey. That means 1, 2, 3. 3 of its neighboring cells will have honey. And we have already concluded 2 and 4. Right? Let's check this, this 4. Now, if this 4 is having honey, that means 1, 2, 3 and 4. Correct. We will not take these three because otherwise our question will and the answer will get weird and it will we will get wrong answer because of this three. Three is connected to three of the cells which contains honey, right? So we will not disturb it. Now, four will uh, have four of its neighboring cells which will contain honey. One, two, three and four. Correct. But... Does it make sense? Because if we see this 2, the bottom 2, okay, this 2 is already attached with 1 and 2 of its neighboring cells, right? If we will assume that this 3 is also having honey, again, we will not get the correct answer, right? So instead of this 3, what we can assume is this 1 is having honey, right? Because 1 is also the neighboring cell of 4. So we are having now, if I see 1, 2, 3 and 4. 4 of the neighboring cells contains honey. And if I check this 1 as well, so 1 is attached to only one of its neighboring cell which contains honey. Right? That means we are done. How many cells contains honey? Let's count. 1, let me choose a different color. 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six. I know so many scribbles, but the correct answer is six. That is option C. We cannot have honey over here, neither over here, right? So from here, we conclude that the answer is going to be six. Option C is correct. Okay, moving on to our next problem. Three girls, one after another, take some cookies from the tray shown. Okay, from this tray, they are taking the cookies. One of the girls take all heart-shaped cookies. So we are having three girls. Let's give them the numbers. Girl number one, girl number two, and girl number three. First girl take all heart-shaped cookies. Another girl takes all white cookies. Another girl takes all large cookies. Okay. However, they do not necessarily take the cookies in this order. But what we know is one girl takes three cookies, one girl takes six cookies and one takes seven cookies. So which of the following set of cookies does one of these girls take? Okay. What are they saying? One, there are three girls, right? One, two, three. One will contain, take three, another will take six and another will take seven cookies. But we don't know what all cookies they are going to take and in which order. Okay. But we know that one of the girls contain, takes all heart shaped cookies. How many heart shaped cookies we are having? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That means this can't be the first one to start, right? It will not take 7, 6 cookies. Okay. Another is the girl takes white cookies. So let's see how many white cookies we are having. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so if we remove all the white cookies, okay, let's assume one of the girl takes white cookies, that is seven in number. Okay, now let's go to our first girl who takes all heart cookies. How many heart cookies we are left with? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That can't be possible, right? Because the girl takes cookies. It can be 3, 6, and 7. Right? Okay. That means the last girl will start taking the cookies first. What the girl is doing? She is taking all the large cookies. Okay? That means all of these cookies. How many cookies will she take? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Let's assume this girl is taking 7 cookies. The other girl takes all white cookies. White cookies, that means one, two, three, four. Hmm, that means on the second number, she can't be there, right? So let's go to our very first. One of the girls takes all heart-shaped cookies. So out of the remaining one, these will be the heart-shaped cookies, right? One, two, three. 4, 5, 6. Yes, this is doable. She can take 6 cookies, right? And then lastly, our this girl who took all the white cookies. She will take only 3 of them. Whatever is left over, right? So, 3 cookies she will take. And what was the question? Which of the following sets of cookies does one of these girls take? So, in the options, we can say only this option E three white cookies, right? And ta-da, we are done with our question. Okay, here also we did guess and check, right? It's okay to take time and to understand the question, right? And then to figure out your answer. In the end, if you're having time, you can check as well whether you are correct or wrong. Okay?
all right moving on to our last question there are two types of blocks white and red as shown in the picture can you see this picture below okay a small cube can be made using four white blocks so this is the white block we can attach one over here one at the top one on the side to make a cube okay so either we can use four white blocks or we can keep this white block one of the white blocks over here okay to complete it so we can use one white and one red block okay to make a cube the large cube is shown in the picture which is made up of small cubes right so what is the smallest number of white blocks needed to make this large cube firstly whatever we are able to see let's count those okay here we can see 1 2 3 4 correct four white blocks here we are using one of the white block correct because see this is the red part which we can see so that means at the top we have attached our white part correct okay now here as well we can see 1 2 3 4 4 four of the white blocks this is red that means in the bottom or on the back side we have again used one of the white block and this is also red that means we have again used one of the white block right because with every red block we are using one white block okay now here we can see one white block let's assume again it's the same combination of red and one white okay here as well we can assume it's a red and one white but there is one more hidden cube in the back side correct because it's a solid figure so just in the back side there is one cube which will again have one red and one white right so this is the smallest number of cubes white blocks basically which will be needed to make this large cube we need to add it now let's do it 4 plus 4 is 8 8 plus 1 is 9 9 plus 1 is 10 correct and 10 plus 1 2 3 4 will be 14 done okay now what we did over here wherever we are able to see four four white blocks in this part and in this part we took it four four others wherein we are not able to see that they have used four of the white blocks we will assume they have used one why because we have to find out smallest number of white blocks okay so here is the one here is the one here is the one and then in the back side the cube which is hidden we will again assume one of the white blocks has been used okay done so the correct answer to this problem is option d and we are done i hope all the questions are clear and yes if you haven't joined our whatsapp community the link is in the description box below and the qr will also reflect on the screen you can join for valuable exam updates and resources and i will be meeting you soon in another video till then keep learning bye bye